The Challenger is definitely the iconic staple of American muscle. And when you get the Scat Pack, it's kind of my favorite variant because you could actually keep this car planted and you feel the performance in the 2023 Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack Plus in granite with black interior leather. Furman Dodge of Wesley Chapel has given it to us today, starting off SRT spoiler and 475 pound-feet of torque with the 392 cubic inch engine, 6.5 four liter V8 Hemi, 475 pound-feet of torque, all paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission, 15 MPGs for the city, 24 MPGs for the highway, with 245, 45, 20-inch wheel, five double spoke with Brembo brakes. You get four pistons in the front, disc reading at 14.2 inches. The rear is at 13.8 inches. We have performance all around the vehicle, and it should with what we have underneath the hood. A length at 179.9 inches, you're gonna get a more firm suspension, Bilston shock set, front and rear heavy duty, anti-roll bars, short and long arm front suspension with coil springs and a multi-link rear suspension with coil springs with a limited slip differential. 55, 45 weight distribution, so you can do a little bit of maneuverability. Satin spoiler, which bulges out a bit more. We do not get the 392 badging in the back. Reverse camera, reverse parking sensors, and LED tail lamps. On the lower, it's not gonna look as aggressive, but you keep going up the tier and it gets more aggressive. You still get your dual exhaust outlets, which when you have this much horsepower underneath it, anything more than this, it's gonna really start making the vehicle hop. So this is kind of the sweet spot for the Dodge Challenger in the sense of getting all the raw power, zero to 60s in the low four seconds, quarter miles in the low 11 seconds. This is back in around 2008, 2009. They haven't changed the body style and you're getting those performance numbers. Quick release, 15.2 cubic feet of storage. It's a wide opening, it's just a long entrance to go inside to one of the deepest cargos in the business. Underneath the floor, we have the upgraded Harman Kardon with your battery. Split fold the rear bench at a 60-40 split. That's gonna maximize cargo. We have 392 cubic feet of reasons to start up that exhaust so you can hear it rev up now. <laughs> Entering inside the Scat Pack 392. Headroom, 39.3 inches. Legroom, 42 inches. Eight-way power seat adjustment with two-way manual for the driver. Memory heated, ventilated, four-way manual for the passenger. 8.4 inch Uconnect 4 with Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, six premium speakers from Alpine is standard. We have the upgraded 18 speakers through Harman Kardon, which includes the subwoofers that are in the trunk. Wi-Fi hotspot, AM, FM, performance page, which includes gauges, timers, more gauges for your temperatures, the G-Force reading, the engine, the dyno. Put it into reverse. Got a reverse camera with trajectory. Real carbon fiber inserts are going to be all around it. 392 with a bumblebee on the passenger side. More of that sport long hood and dashboard mixture. The gauge cluster is 180 mile per hour speedo with a digital reader in the center that can go through an array of information for the driver, including the performance page so you don't have to look on the Uconnect. Dual climate control settings, an area here that you can put your cell phone or the key fob for the Dodge Challenger. Leather around that eight speed automatic transmission, the carbon fiber in the driver focus setup. It's gonna be more soft and sporty, push back, open up, two USB and a 12 volt with the Dodge Brothers logo. The steering wheel is a leather wrap, multi-function with adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist. The paddle shifters will be smaller on the 392 opposed to the 
SRT Hellcat or the Hellcat Red Eye. The dashboard and door panel integrate in together. Memory seats start off for the driver and it's gonna be more of your everyday materials and it's gonna start being soft where it needs to be. One touch up and down for the windows, a storage pocket with the beverage holder in the front and a little nook for the back seat. Alcantara for the headline that includes with that carbon fiber and the moon roof. To enter into the back seat, I would first take this out, push this, so that way I can fit because I'm six foot three and as you're noticing the opening is not necessarily the widest to fit three occupants in the back. For the back seats, headroom at 37.1 inches, which is not necessarily too bad considering the type of vehicle we're in. Leg space at 33.1 inches, but the rails is an issue even sitting on the sides. Two air vents get in the center with storage behind both of the front seats. Everyday materials is everywhere except where it needs to be, where you rest your arms. Sitting into the center headroom is gonna be pretty much impossible unless you just kind of push yourself like this and then leg space will be an issue. Feet space because the rails and you're gonna be sharing significant butt and shoulder space because this is really designed for two, maybe four, it's doable, but it's gonna be a tight fit in the back. One quick tip, if you buy a Challenger in the state of Florida, tint the windows. It's very hot and you're gonna have to be using the AC full blast. And 485 horsepower needs to breathe. 475 pound-feet of torque needs to breathe. And that's what we're gonna demonstrate right now. Oh man. That exhaust note that filters in. It's a quiet drive otherwise. It's not gonna be the best in MPGs, but you know what you're buying when you get a scat. This is one of my favorite options because it stays a little bit more planted, even though the dynamics isn't great. 55, 45 isn't bad for weight distribution, but you still have a lot of weight for that engine. Visibility, you have that long hood. You get used to it because it's very performance driven. For a daily use, I will note that it might take you 500 miles or so to get really used to the length of it because even past the hood, you still have another six to eight inches of clearance because of that SRT spoiler. For the back, I mean, forget about it. You have too many reasons to push the gas and pass people. And you got blind spot monitoring because this is the plus. So you get some of those safety features embedded with it. Four piston setup in the front. The brakes are not going to be an issue. I'm gonna pull up just a little bit just to show you. And now that's gonna take me to what I like and dislike. And starting off with is what I like. When you get the scat pack, it's not as wheel happy. So you will still burn through tires, but not as much as a Hellcat or a Hellcat Red Eye. So you're gonna have a little bit of savings with the performance and you're still nearly 500 horsepower. 485 horsepower is quite a bit when you're at a MSRP under $50,000. The second thing that I like about the vehicle is it's a smooth drive, driving in normal, and it's quiet in the interior because you get the exhaust note that pretty much filters out everything else. And if that's not enough, then turn up the Harman Kardon sound system because you got 18 speakers plus those subwoofers that I showed you in the trunk. Listen to this thing. It's a symphony. That's the second thing that I like is the exhaust. I mean, it just, it's so intoxicating. Listen. Me personally, I wouldn't even use the sound system. I would just probably downshift so I can hear that exhaust throughout the journey. Back in the day, what people used to do is take their vehicles out for a drive. This is that type of car. Three things that I dislike about the vehicle is they haven't really changed anything since the Challenger has came out. It would be nice to have some changes to it and not wait for the whole new electric variant to make those changes. The second thing that I dislike is the way they proportion the cabin. It's okay for the front occupants, but they really could have cut some of that hood and maybe pushed this forward a bit. It really just goes to the design team here. You have optimal cargo space, but interior space lacks with headroom for people that's over six foot three and leg room for anybody in the back seat. The last thing that I dislike is this Uconnect. It is a bit glitchy. When you get into the performance page, sometimes it can take a few seconds to near minutes 
to just see what's going on in which I would just probably toggle through the gauge cluster to see my performance page because it's going to be easier. Turn radius at more or less the stop point is going to get about two and a part lane. Let's rock and roll. It's super quick. Dynamics isn't necessarily too bad. The steering wheel does have a little bit of play to it and a little bit of weight. So it does make it more of an engaged drive. Everywhere you go at a scat pack, you're gonna wanna floor it. The seat sits up a little bit higher than my liking for a sports car, but it is something that you can get used to. And because it's such a big seat, it feels a little bit more comfortable, kind of contours to your body, making visibility a little bit more optimal for the front occupants. For the back seat, you're gonna be pretty much all over the place and you won't be able to fit people my dimensions in the back if I'm driving this type of vehicle. And realistically speaking, I'm going to be driving this type of vehicle. I like to thank Furman Dodge of Leslie Chapel for giving us this 2023 Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack Plus for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Click the next video in the subscribe button, check out the merchandise website and Instagram, leave a comment and a like.